presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Oh, look at oh. It's a beautiful day. Look at our man, Jim from Minneapolis. We are taken by storm. Take it by storm, baby. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying, man. Hey, what's happening, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good man. Yourself? Oh, man. It's been the most incredible couple of days since when I called in on Friday. Litecoin busted out of that consolidation on the two-hour chart. Okay. And it just never looked back. It did a 100-point ABC up, and now it's very extended the way I look at it. But yeah. holy commo I mean, it went up to $420 last night. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven and a half hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Don't take anything personally. Your truth is personal to you. Your own opinions and point of view reflect your own agreements and are personal to you. It's no one's truth but your own. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 192, Nasdaq up 56, S&P's up 19, gold contract up $9.10, trading at 1747 an ounce. You get silver up six cents, fifteen dollars forty cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up three dollars twelve cents, sixteen dollars ninety two cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. Ten year right now down one tick, one thirty nine flat. Thirty year up a half a point, or sixteen ticks at one eighty one fifteen. And king dollar. King dollar is up 54 ticks, trading 100.441. The euro is at 107. The yen is out here at 107.64. And the British pound is at 123 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at it. What do you have? Well, you got a little volatility out here today. Uh, these wrenches come out of nowhere. And what we had out here... And, and the, this afternoon, you got up to a price point of 28.36. Um, at, uh, let's see, uh, well, yeah, 12.40 uh, p.m., what you did, you had a story come out uh, about Gilead, that the, uh, over, the test over in China was a failure, et cetera, the whole ball of wax. That took the S&Ps uh, down about as fast as you can go. Uh, we went down at 30, let's see, 30, yeah, 30, 44 points. Um, Tested it again, bottom line, rejected it on the first test. What I expect you're going to see here, folks, I suspect we're going to sell off into the close. Now, the reason I'm saying that, if we go over to the SPY, what you're going to see is this. Is that yesterday what we had done, you went to higher price, you had a monster contraction of volume. Bottom line, we're going to have another one today. Um, you know, we are coming into... 146 million shares. Yesterday you did 86, no, you did 94. 93. Today we're already at 84, so we should do 100, but the bottom line, you should be banging out like 150, 160 in order to sustain higher price. And the, the, the demand is just not there. Inside the NDX 100, same type of setup. And inside the NDX, you know, bottom line, we should be banging out at something like 60, 65 million shares. Right now you're at 36. Yesterday we did 40. At the queues, they'll, they'll probably do about 40, 45. Uh, and what I expect you're going to see in both cases now is that you won't hold price also. And not holding price, folks, in this particular case, I'm not talking about on the highs. I'm talking about you won't even hold price of the highs of yesterday. So inside the queues, that number is 212.35. That was the high of yesterday, even though we had given it up. You, we got over it. I suspect we're going to close under it. If we go over to the SPY, what you're going to see, that number inside of the SPY is going to be 281 flat. And right now you're at 280.59. So going to be wild watching this uh, whole thing shake out. 
We go into the gold contract, gold contract out here today. We hit uh, 1764. Right now, you're at 1747. You got 191,000 contracts traded. Bottom line is that gold wants higher price. You get the equities wanting higher price. If we go take a look at the GDX, you get 42 million shares inside the GDX. You're going to have. It's not going to be an ABC structure up. Uh, they will put some monster volume in at the close in the GDX. We take this on, on the weekly, though. What you are, are going to see is that I believe we get the break top side. Let me see what that number is. The number that we need to get a stay over, yeah, we have it. So the GDX, folks, is trading 33.53. That has launched the seven-year consolidation that we're, we've been in. And that's a big number because that's saying the GDX next move up is going to be somewhere about 47 to 53, and right now you're at 33. And I know that's a very large number, folks, when you just say that, okay, you're going to move from there to there. But if you want to see how fast these large numbers have come inside these gold equities, I'll bring a couple up for you just to show you. Uh, if we go back into... Newmont, what you're going to see inside Newmont, Newmont broke top side two weeks ago. When it broke top side, we're talking $44. It's trading 62 Barrick just broke this week. That broke top side. So those are the two largest gold equities in the world. Uh, bottom line, Garrett, Barrick is trading at $26.91. That break, which has been this week, $23. And Barrick is, bottom line, saying, you know, 3743 is coming at us and you're at 2691 right now. So you're talking about some uh, very heavy numbers. There's no two ways about that. Notes. Notes and bonds, you get the 10 year flat out that 13301. The 30 year right now is up 20 at 18119 and King Dollar. King Dollar's up that 28 ticks trade 100.417. Uh, bottom line, what I expect we're going to see out here, let's go into the NQs for a second. If we go to the NQs, we take a look at the NQs. NQs out here right now. You're up 28 points. We had a high out here today of 87.86. Uh, so that's 120 points higher than we were. Uh, I expect this is also going to go right after the lows, which is 86.05. So you're talking about another 60 points down. We're alive in the green by 30. Uh, I think it's going to be a wild 60 minutes uh, as we uh, shake out here. Some of the higher volume equities, and this will be a low volume market out here today, uh, is that you have Snap down 64 cents. Uh, let's see, American Airlines is up 5 cents. You got Carnival up uh, 42. Um, Nothing, nothing really heavy. Yeah, well, no, Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil's up a buck forty-two. Inside the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX. You get Sirius Satellite up six percent. Expedia's up three percent. Net NTAP, uh, NetApp is up uh, three point two. Taken away from it. Citrix down six point three. This is this is always a heads up, folks. When the chip stocks can't handle it, on the way up and they give it up. Guess what? Heavy pressure inside the NDX 100, as well as the composite. Uh, they love bringing the market up, bringing the market down. So Citrix is down 6.5%. You get uh, Xilinx down 4%. You get Starbucks down 3.7%. We go take a look at the, uh, oh, Intel, INTC. That's coming out with numbers today. Let's take a look. Thanks, Jeff. So uh, INTC. So this is going to get interesting. So Intel trading down 58 cents. They, that's been a sideways move. They're going to be looking, let's see what they're looking for. 23rd already. They're going to be looking for 18.8 .8 billion to the top line, a buck 28 uh, coming down. Stay right there, folks. Good out, man. Mr. Jason Path coming back with us. We're going to be bisecting and dissecting some of these sectors inside the marketplace out here. Come right back. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. On Thursday, April 30th, I'll be holding an all-day online seminar where I'll teach you the essentials of my trading methodology, Timing the Trade. From 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, with a lunch break from noon to 1, I'll be covering quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and much more, all while the market is open in real time. When you sign up, I'll mail you a physical copy of my best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. You'll also receive a free month of my daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, $169 value. This six-hour online seminar will be archived if you can't attend the entire day live. My Timing the Trade webinar is taking place Thursday, April 30th, so don't wait to sign up. For all the details and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 83. Nasdaq's up 15. S&Ps are up 5.5. Let's go over to IMM, Mr. Jason Path, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. Jason, what's going on, brother? Not much, Tom. How are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So, uh, you know, we get quite a market, no doubt. Uh, we had gas numbers this morning. So uh, what are we thinking here? Yeah, so I've been watching gas closely. You know, the interesting thing about natural gas right now is in some ways, certainly from a production standpoint, it's linked with oil, right? A lot of companies drill with both, drill for both. You have a lot of what they call associated gas. About 10 to 12 percent of the natural gas we extract is really comes from drilling for oil. I see. And again, a lot of a lot of wells, you know, are, are both gas and liquids. So as as rigs come off the field, as these oil, primarily EMP companies, get hit as, as hard as they're getting hit, um, we really see natural gas production going down. Clearly, the demand is 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 the variable everybody's watching closely. Um, but you know, we all get the story in oil, right? We're not flying, we're not driving, but we're still, you know, heating and cooling our houses. We're still using electri electricity. So, yeah. Uh, it's so deep, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's I, exactly. We've been a long term downtrend, you know, gas markets, you know, once upon a time were very volatile and swung wildly. It's been, you know, kind of a grind downward over the last year or two. But um, I really feel like. Gas guy hit harder than it should have a few weeks back when oil started to get hit. Yeah, people are taking rigs out of the field. Um, we're going to see production really fall off a cliff. And again, we're still going to heat and cool our homes. Clearly, demand will incrementally go back up in gas as we as we reopen the country. But you know, the, I think the consensus this morning was for 47, 48 BCF on an injection. We did 43. I think it's going to continue to be a little more bullish on the storage numbers that people are expecting because I think they've overfactored for um, you know, a loss of demand. And I, I think as, as we move forward, as the country reopens, we incrementally use more gas. Um, you know, because you know, we're at like 155, 156 on futures, which is, is getting pretty close to you know, multi-decade lows. I know, you I know, it, 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 there's ahead. no doubt that it's amazing. I said to Tommy this morning, it's so deviant, man, right? That, you know, it's been so low, folks, okay? And then you right. think that, okay, it only can go so low. I mean, I mean, Mr. Ed Young years ago, he said, well, the best cure for low prices is low prices, right? <laughs> That's right. And what, what, happens in, what happens in gas is you have, you have what they call gas switching or coal switching, where when the price gets that low, the price of coal has really gone up dramatically over the last couple of years. Plants, many plants are able to switch. 
And so when you get down to 155, 160, folks switch over to gas. What we've seen during the downturn, we've yes. seen electricity demand drop about 10% across the country. But plants are burning more gas because they're switching over from coal. And we've seen gas as a percent of mix move from 35% to 40% across the country. Wow. And so we're actually burning about as much gas as we did before the downturn. Um, so I think that's net bullish for gas. And uh, I think it's gonna, it's certainly going to be an interesting spring and summer in the energy world. But as, as these companies continue to get hit, CapEx gets hit, rigs come off the field. You know, we're down about half from this time last year on rigs. Um, I think it's net bullish for gas long term. Hey, so l let me ask you, right, you know, on the notes that you sent over, and this is really intriguing, folks, okay, because uh, uranium, and, and I'm looking, you know, as soon as you sent it over this morning, right, I'm looking at Kamiko, right? Kimiko, That's right. Kamiko's an ABC up. I mean, so talk to me about uranium. What's the, what's the deal why this thing is running, man? So you want to talk about companies that just could never figure out how to make money historically, right? So uranium companies, they overmined, they, they could just never figure it out. And then countries honestly started using old nuclear waste piles to, to get supply. And, you know, across the, across the world, right, globally, about 25 percent of our power is uh, supplied by nuclear. And what you had last year, uh, Kamiko and others really got together almost cartel-like and decided to really cut supply and improve I see. margins. And they did it. Um, and again, it'd be up below the radar. Everybody's worried about oil and gas, the energy yeah. sector. And, and Kamiko's really led the way on cutting back in production with the stated goal of lifting price. And you can see it's just been <laughs> exploding topside. We, we expected that um, given given Kamiko and other statements. And um, it's, it's just played out and it's continued to go up and up and up. It's a beautiful setup, man. And if you, it's Kamiko, folks. The the uh, symbol is CCJ, uh, and you know, check it out. It's an ABC up. It took the B point out today. That B point is nine dollars and eighty cents, and it already just went up from five dollars in a month. So, big number. So hey, uh, we're gonna switch over. Let's talk the euro. So talk to me about the euro. Actually, can, you know what I want to do? Can we talk? I yeah. want to. I want to talk about this. Um, no, let's do the euro first. Then we'll go into the bonds. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it, clearly we're all at home, you know, worried about the virus, but there's there's a lot of geopolitical risk and a lot of things happening across the world. You know, and right now in Europe, you know, you've got 100,000 people dead around the world with the virus. You've got um, Europe is in the midst of the greatest recession that they've ever faced, and they just cannot get on the same page as to how to deal with it. Right. Um, you've still got risk in the Middle East. You've got, you know, Italy versus Norway there on the continent. Um, and I, I think all of that, we saw, you know, the, the uh, uh, product manufacturing numbers come out of Europe, you know, 13.1 or something, just all time lows, yeah. the, the economic data that's printing. I think it's very net bearish for the euro. Uh, and one of the ideas that we're, you know, expressing in some new trades is, you know, short euro yen, for instance. Uh, you know, with Kim Jong Un, who knows what's happening over there in North Korea? You know, the end's a safe haven. Yeah. Enough, a lot of geopolitical risks, certainly some on the continent with the euro. You know, they're meeting this week and today, really trying to hammer out a $2.2 trillion uh, deal. And I just don't think it's going to happen. So if folks are looking for a way to divest a little exposure away from the dollar, still go long geopolitical risk short the euro, I think your euro yen short for the next couple months is way of nice. play. There's just there's too much risk in the world right now, aside from the virus, um, and the European leaders just can't get on stage. Yeah, we're a lot lucky. I mean, this, you know, we have all the states. It's one, you know, federal government versus what they have going on. There's no doubt. That's right. So, yeah, in, and Italy and Spain were in trouble going in, right? Yeah, and it's just exactly big right. time. So, when we talk bonds, can we talk, first talk? Tell me about this gold copper ratio, okay? Right. Yeah, so one of the models we use is uh, the gold copper copper gold ratio, and just think in terms of a simple ratio. You know, the price of copper over the price of gold. Yeah, it's a way to mathematize right macro large macro cycles. And if the price of copper is going up, that's typically bullish. Um, you know, gold certainly a safe haven. And what we've seen over the last you know ten twenty years is it's a very good proxy for tracking um, anticipated movements in the ten year yield. Again, also kind of a benchmark safe haven type play proxy for risk in the macro environment. So what we've seen lately is, you know, I certainly expect to a copper to continue to, to break higher, um, is there's been a break, right? Yields have come way in. The gold copper ratio hasn't broken down nearly as much. So it's telling you one of two things, either, you know, copper's going to fall off a cliff or yields have to come back out a little bit and uh, you know, the price of treasuries has to come down. Right. I think that's what's going to happen. We've seen that historically with that ratio. Whenever it gets back out of whack, 
the yields come up to meet where the price of copper is as you chart that over a longer time horizon. That's so cool, man, because I think one of the biggest questions that we'll be asking each other, all of us in the, in the investment world, is that what's going to happen with the yields and is there inflation coming in, right? I mean, it's, you know, That's right. Yeah. 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 Pretty- I think they have to go out uh, from where, you know, where they are today. You look at the 10 year today. I mean, it, 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 they'll drift high. They'll drift out. You know, will we see three again this decade? I, I can't say that. But, right. Right. You know, from six tenths of a percent on the 10 year, I, I think it's pretty safe to say, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be in a much higher yield world in the next few months. Awesome. Awesome information, man. Really appreciate the uh, education, Jason. Yeah, Tom. Appreciate it, man. Have a great rest of the day. Great one. Safe one. We look forward to speaking to you next week. Okay, man. I can't wait. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tom. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow. Dow up 92. NASDAQ up 15. S&P's up 6.5. Coming right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN has developed a daily programming lineup for traders by traders. We start every trading day live at 8.30 a.m. with Tommy O'Brien hosting the morning market kickoff as he starts the day off by breaking down everything you need to know about what's going on for the trading day ahead. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento takes your calls and questions live on the air for the opening bell as he hosts Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the Bull Bear Trading Hour. At 11 a.m., it's Kevin Hanks and Alex Coffey from TD Ameri Trade Network with Fast Market, Basil Chapman at noon with the Tiger Technicians Hour, Steve Rhodes hosts the Trader's Edge at 1 p.m., Dave White with a Power Trading Hour at 2 p.m., and Tom O'Brien closes out the day for the final hour of trading live from 3 till 4. Don't miss a second of our daily programming lineup. Tune in to Tiger TV every trading day live at TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow up uh, 100. NASDAQ up uh, 17. S&P's up uh, five and a half. Now, this is pretty cool, folks. Uh, so New York, of course, got hit one of the hardest in the country outside of the state of Washington. Uh, the differential coming out of it is that they're going to have some monster testing capabilities, which they've already started. Uh, and this study here is pretty cool. Um, in, in New York, now this just came out uh, today. A New York study seeking to measure the spread of the new coronavirus found that 13.9% 
uh, uh, of the 3,000 people tested across the state had signs of the virus. Now, that is one of the biggest reviews to date, okay? Now, check this out, though. That implies that 2.7 million residents may have had COVID-19. Um, uh, Governor Andrew uh, uh, Como said that's 10 times uh, more than the official count based on the state's testing, okay? Uh, the pandemic, uh, no doubt, was uh, more intense in New York City, the hottest hit area, uh, where 21 percent, picture this, 21 percent tested positive for a blood marker showing that they had been infected at some point. Uh, the bottom line, just only the beginning of it. So we're going to be getting some uh, more numbers. Uh, his quote is that uh, we're going to continue to test on a rolling basis. We have larger and la- to get a larger and larger sample. I want to see a snapshot of what's happening with the rate, is it going up, is it flat, is it going down, so that they can really make some uh, clear decisions as to going forward. The cool thing here, so what they're also saying is this, okay, the study, uh, let's see, okay, so this is, this is a big part of it too. The fatality rate is likely to be lower than implied by merely examining the confirmed cases and the deaths, okay? Because if we had 2.7 million people that actually had it in New York, the fatality rate would go down a half a percent versus the numbers that we were talking about before. Uh, what they are worrying about a little is that uh, they're not sure whether they got enough older people inside of this study, okay? Um, the survey used blood tests that look for antibodies, which are markers in the blood created by the immune system after a person has been infected. Uh, they can show whether the person was previously infected by the virus. Um, you know, so the bottom line is that uh, a decent setup, and I suspect what's what's going to end up happening is that it's going to be the, uh, more than likely, some of these tests that are coming out of New York will tell us exactly uh, how many folks actually had it, uh, and, you know, that's going to make a difference uh, as long as these antibodies do uh, turn around and keep people safe going into the future. You know, it's, it's going to be a big, that's, there's no doubt that's, that's a big deal. So we'll uh, see where that's at, but uh, that, that is good news. There's no two ways about it. Market-wise out here, this is going to get interesting. You know, we were talking about, uh, my take is that this thing's going to go negative um, as we come into the close here. Now, what we just did, when we just, we just popped down again, you know, so the, not the low of this trading session, the low of the day, but that was overnight, is 27.72. The low of this trading session thus far, folks, has been uh, 27.86, I think. Yeah, it's 27.86. Well, we just popped into 27.90. Now you're at 27.97. Uh, we got, uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, yeah, it's 3.30 in the afternoon. This is building cause to break this area. Now, this is what's going to be intriguing. This area right here is, is going to actually be hard to break. The, the reason it's going to be hard to break, folks, is that we've been trading at this area right now. You can actually bring it all the way over uh, to yesterday, uh, basically at uh, noon. You know, so we've been down here many times, and thus far, it does not want to break this area. So we'll see how this shakes out. The first leg down uh, was the largest leg down. Uh, and the, ne- the next leg, even the leg that we j- had just come down, there's not enough volume. If you can see this correlation, the correlation when we came down was 26,000 contracts versus 36,000 contracts versus 125,000 contracts. So you can see this is the building cause um, it looks to break the area. And the way that you do this, okay, meaning that how, so the, the real question would be there, questioning that methodology would be that, well, how would you know that? Or why would you think that? So what you do is that then you look to see how the S&P goes up. And if you look at how it goes up, what you're going to see, your first bounce out here, bottom line had uh, 28,000 contracts, your next bounce had 21,000 contracts, and we'll see what we get this time. See, that's the correlation. So the correlation is that you try to bust it down, you get the lighter volume on the way down. First big volume, then bigger volume. No, first big volume, then lighter than the big volume, then lighter. But all those three volumes were much heavier than how we went topside. 
by, by the tune, you can see that, by the tune of 125,000, 60,000, 38,000 versus started out with 28 and the top side 21. You can see the correlation. The correlation is quite clear that you don't have any buyers that as you're going into higher price. The XAU, the HUI, I believe the XAU has broken top side. Uh, that's up 357. Was it the XAU or the HUI? Let's find this out. This was the consolidation it took out also. So that, that number in that consolidation, bring this back. If you're looking at these consolidations inside the gold market, you gotta bring them back like uh, 10 years. Yeah, you did it. 114. 71. So the XA is the first one to break out of the seven-year uh, consolidation, folks. And that's, that's, listen, man, that sets up a big number, man. It sets up a big number. And all you have to do is go look at Newmont, uh, look at Gold, I mean, uh, Barrick, uh, to see the acceleration and how far that acceleration actually went. Uh, if you uh, into any of the South African equities, you're going to see that these things, uh, they went exponential out here today. We, uh, you had gold fields get up to uh, 848. Uh, Harmony out here, that is uh, trading the 350. Uh, and if you want to see why, folks, uh, we'll get over. We take the, uh, this gold contract. We put the gold contract on, I put on a long term chart. When you see the amount of dollars, and RAND dollars that the South Africans are actually getting it is an absolute mind blower. So if you're watching Tiger TV, right now you're going to see 1733. This is a continuous contract. That's in US dollars. In US dollars, folks, the high in gold is $1,920. Okay? We haven't broke it. Okay? With 1733. Now watch what ends up happening. I put this in RAND dollars. Yeah, this is just a hard chart to really wrap your head around because it's so dramatic and that's why the South Africans are making so much money. The high of 2011 in Rand dollars was 14743 <laughs> The high today, folks, is $33,313. Yeah, Rand dollars. And their expenses, well, they get paid in U.S. dollars for the gold. Their expenses are in Rand dollars. And so you can see... Um, Harmony, uh, AU, uh, they, they have their numbers uh, only uh, once a year. Bottom line, last night in South Africa, they, they basically came out though and said, hey, listen, man, we're, uh, we're making some money out here. Uh, these stocks went, up, you know, they've been going up dramatically. Last night, they, they all went up uh, on a monster number. There's no two ways about it. If you're looking at that, that's Rand dollars right now in Harmony. You know, you get up. To, you went from uh, 5,800 last night to 6,900 grand dollars. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow up 97. Nasdaq is up 15. S and P's are up seven. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. 
Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow up 142. NASDAQ up 31. S&P's up 13. Let's go to Lee in Riverview. Hey, Lee, what's going on? Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. Hey, I wanted to ask you about the SLV. I, just from listening, I kind of know what your thoughts are on gold. I was looking at the gold to silver ratio entered SLV and wanted to get your thoughts on it and also stop. Let's take a look. So we get uh, the SLV, which is the iShares Silver Trust, folks. Uh, the low uh, out here for the year is $10. The high is 1834 You're trading at 1427 So silver, I mean, the bottom line, Lee, still needs a bid. You know, this, is the, this has not been moving with gold, that's for sure. Um, right. You know, so the real question is, stop-wise, I wouldn't let it go into 1390 And what I'm doing okay. there is that I'm taking the high of three days ago. You know, right. you can put, you know, you can put the stop at 1375 or something like that, because if they smoke silver, I mean, this, this will come down quick. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, what I don't quite get is that why, you know, silver hasn't taken off. Um, I, I think there's only one gold. That's, that's the bottom line, because if I've learned anything, like I love platinum, and, <laughs> and platinum's been a dog. So, huh. you know, it's... You know, if if you if we were talking like ten years ago, I'd be saying that, you know, if if we were talking three years ago, no, four years ago, I'd say silver has to take off with gold. But I'm not in that camp, and I'm not in that camp. The reason I'm not in that camp is what happened with platinum. You know, okay. I know I know platinum upside down. I know that there's less of it in the world. It's harder to mine, all of the above, but. It's not gold. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it comes yep. down to. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out now, it's like, okay, what's going on with silver then? You know what I'm saying? Um, right. Because it's certainly not acting like, like gold. The silver stocks aren't acting like the gold stocks. They're, they're not bad, okay? But they're certainly, they just, you know, some of the gold stocks are up 100% <laughs> in, in right. four weeks. Five weeks, right. you know what I mean. So that's yep. the part I'd be careful of. Don't, don't, and I wouldn't get hung. I definitely would not get hung on the, that gold silver ratio. That gold silver ratio, what that is, folks. Okay, that goes back to when we actually use silver and use gold, and we're on that standard. And I know silver people love it, and that you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, but you know. All right. Well, thanks a lot, bud. I appreciate it. Okay, man. You have a great... I think, hey, I yeah. think I'm going to just sell that and put it in the USO. 
<laughs> you, are, you are funny. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks a lot, bud. Have a great one, man. Have a safe you one. You too. <laughs> uh, and if you weren't around the USO, folks, I was screaming out here yesterday and the day before that you better not buy the USO. It's just so funny. And the uh, and here we go. Also, oh, look, look at this. This this is sick. When we were talking the USO, Tommy and I were talking about this for the last two days, right? And the USO finally went back to net asset value. In fact, it's less than net asset value now. So, so watch this. This is how sick this is, folks, okay? So two days ago, the net asset value, okay, was the same as it is right now, 260. The di well, the net asset value right now is 276, and it's trading at 262. It was 60 cents over what the net asset value was. And we we're explaining that it doesn't matter where oil goes, this is going to go back to net asset value. Well, it's worse than that. It, it actually, not only basically now it's trading under net asset value, okay? So, you know, I wish I could basically explain to the hundreds of millions of people, well, it wouldn't be hundreds of millions, okay? But it'd be thousands of people that are trading this, that the bottom line is that they shouldn't be trading it because not now it's, anyway it is what it is and the reason that i know there's so many people that are in it folks okay has to do with the market cap it's a, almost a four billion dollar market cap and the sponsor of this is never going to give it up and the reason they're not going to give it up as you can see all you can do multiply four billion dollars times 0.72 of one percent okay that's, that's the type of money that they're making inside of this. So they'll keep changing the structure that's inside it, but they're not going to give it up because there's plenty of people outside of the Tigers and Tigresses that don't understand, number one, what it is, and number two, what is actually inside of it. So pretty wild. Let's go take a look at a few of the uh, big dogs inside the NDX100. Oh, here. I want, Amazon's up uh, 35 bucks, but check this out, folks. This is going to be intense. Amazon is going to start getting some real bad press, I'd say. Let me find this article, because this is a bad article. And, you know, it's not like... I, I like what Amazon has done in the context of a, a business, okay? What I don't... Yeah, I know I, I can't stand this, actually. It, it, it drives me out of my mind right now. Um, and what it is... So check this out. i got to find this article. Because this is, this is what they did, okay? And they're going to, this is like disgusting. So Amazon and, you know, these large internet companies have done this a million times. Microsoft was the king of this years ago. Once uh, they'd basically see a product out there, they'd take the product, well, they wouldn't, yeah, they'd figure out how to put it inside Windows, destroy the product, okay? In Amazon's case, this is what's out here today. Amazon employees have used data about independent sellers on the company's platform to develop competing products, a practice at odds with the company's stated policies. The online retailer has long asserted, including to Congress, that when it makes and sells its own product, it doesn't use information it collects from the site's individual third-party sellers, data that those sellers view as proprietary. Yet interviews with more than 20 former employees of Amazon's private label business and documents reviewed by the Wall Street Journal reveal that employees did just that. Such information can help Amazon decide how to price an item which features to copy and whether to enter the product segment based on its earnings potential. Uh, in one instance, Amazon uh, employees assess documents and data about a best-selling car trunk organizer sold by a third-party vendor. That information includes total sales, how much the vendor paid Amazon for marketing and shipping, and how much Amazon made on each sale. Amazon's private label um, later introduced its own car trunk organizers. It's sick. That, that is like uh, such, that, that is so, they're going to bust them, you know, that, that's, that, this is the stuff, folks, okay, that, you know, these companies, they'll end up being one company left uh, if, in fact, um, regulations don't go in the middle of this, okay, because you, you get a picture, so picture this. I don't care whether you're 16, you're 26, you're 36, you're 66, you start a business, you get a great business going, right? The bottom line, we all know that businesses in general, and particularly we're going to know this even more so after this uh, pandemic, if you can be in the digital part of the business and you're paying less rent and you're doing things digitally and you have a hit, you should be able to basically 
You can have competition, but that competition shouldn't be on the platform that you are selling. And, and in this particular case, of course, there's only a few platforms. So I think the, uh, yeah, this is, I, I, can, I can absolutely see how these, uh, this, this, in fact, I was reading about this, uh, this woman that has been going after Amazon forever. Um, and specifically what she said even years ago was this is how it was going to come down, that there were going to be that many businesses destroyed, and that, in fact, destroys communities because guess what? You know, and yes, they've been doing it for years. I know, I know, sad. Stay right there, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow up 99, Nasdaq up 19, S&P's up 8. We'll come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, an essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 66. Nasdaq's up 11. S&P's are up 3.5. This is going to be a wild one, folks. Uh, and what I mean by that is these last minutes before 4. If now, the futures don't close the quarter past. The reason I'm saying it is that the volume acceleration has got pretty dramatic, and it's laying right next to these lows. We've already done, let's see, 28,000. Uh, inside the E-mini, and uh, the bottom line is that the last swing point was 36, but you get five minutes left in this bar, and then the one before that is uh, 125,000. Uh, so when you're this close uh, and you get uh, six minutes left, my take is that what they're going to try to do here, you're going to see one large order come in, and they're going to try to blow this bottom out. We'll see whether they can get it done. If we get over to the... Um, 
NQs. Yeah, same setup in the NQs right now. Let's do it that way. Okay, so in the NQs, that's interesting. Now, now, now watch this. This way you want to look at both of them. The NQs don't have as much volume on the buildup here. Even though, you know, we're flirting with the red right now, uh, the S&P actually has a, has a bigger buildup than the NQs do. Doesn't mean it won't do it because it's still a lot. In five, in five minutes, we're still on, let's see, what do we got there? Where are we? You're 5,500 versus 94. So the way the NQs are actually set up is that that's doing about the same amount. The S&Ps, however, different ball game, man. That S&P is doing some big numbers. The S&P, when you get a setup like this, don't be surprised if the S&P ends up down like 10 points and right now you're flat because that, that, because we've been here for so long, if they can blow this uh, bottom out coming into the close, they'll put, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you can get down to 2774, 2775. Uh, when, you, when you trade in one place for such a long period of time, folks, it makes a difference. Folks, don't forget, um, let's see, a week from today, a week from today, I'm doing a full webinar, 9 o'clock in the morning. Four in the afternoon. If you want to understand the out of time in the trade, price and volume, all of the above, check it out on the front page of TFNN. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows, and whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a great night, safe night. Come back and visit us tomorrow morning. Tommy kicks us off, 8.30. Great